Hello, I'm Betty Swan, and this is Wisdom in the Night. I'm so glad you're watching this show. I hope you love it. I love doing it. It's a great way for you to see people from every walk of life, every walk of life, and see how they move and, and move along with God, how they learn how to get His destiny for their life. I think you're going to hear things that make a big difference. So let's just get started tonight. The first guest I have is Jeanette Ng. Now I've met Jeanette, oh, several years ago and she's pretty unusual. She's an entrepreneur and you never know what she's going to be doing next. So Jeanette, isn't that right about you? Isn't that right? It is right. Sometimes I surprise myself. Um, Do you really? With all, yeah, different ideas. And just yesterday I was sitting in church, came up with an idea, and by after lunch, you know, over a one, over a 30 minute phone call, I had already developed another idea. Another one? Yes. Do you do that all the time? I do. I'm just constantly, kind of like when an artist wakes up in the middle of the night and has a song, uh -huh. or a poet has a poem, uh -huh. I'll just have an idea. And so it's just important to develop them, write them down, and when the time is right, you can go visit that list and see what you're going to do. So next. do you ever have something written down and you go back later and you go, oh, that's a good one, I'm going to do it? Sure. You do? Mm -hmm. So how many do you have written down right now that you haven't done? Oh, a bunch. I have a lot of ideas and a lot of domain names, <laughs> a lot of websites. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Well, can you build your own website? I can. Okay, so see, you can have as many as you can think of. Exactly. That's the world today. Yep, you can just build a website in one day and be in business the next. So, were you like that as a little girl? I wasn't like a little girl with a lemonade stand and doing all these things. You didn't but do that? I didn't. But You I, know what I did? What did you do? <laughs> I would pick my neighbor's flowers and sell them on the corner. Oh my goodness. You know, was, I had low overhead. I used her flowers. Was your neighbor in on that agreement? You know what kind of? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an entrepreneur too and I, I started early. You are. I yeah. know you as an entrepreneur yourself. Now tell me about your life growing up. All about you. You grew up where? I grew up in New Jersey, although we were born in Brooklyn. So uh, we were born in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and then moved to Chinatown and lived right on East Broadway in Chinatown for a few years. And then once we were of school age, so once I was five years old and my sister was three, my parents moved out to New Jersey so we could grow up in the suburbs with a big yard and with a community pool and space and all that stuff. So what did your dad do? What was, what was your family like? So my dad came over from Hong Kong and he worked in the restaurant business as a busboy and in the kitchen as a line chef, line cook, dishwasher, everything until he worked his way uh, out of that and was then driving taxis. So he really was a blue collar worker and uh, he saved up in, enough money to go back to Hong Kong and bring back uh, his fiance at the time and his mom. And then everybody, you know, then the family was here and he was driving taxis and limos. In Manhattan? He in drove Manhattan. in Manhattan? Right. So, so he, he was, knows Manhattan, I bet, like the back of oh, his hand. Oh, yes. He will tell you a better route. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the shortcuts and he knows the routes and things like that. He knows his way around. Yeah. So how long did he drive a cab? I think he did that for like a decade. Um, he did it for long enough that he saved up in, enough money to become a landlord of a building in Chinatown. And wow. we lived in that building. So that's really amazing. That is the American way. It right really there, is. the American dream, isn't it? He was a busboy, you know? He didn't have an education. And he became the landlord and the owner of a building and my grandma lived there, we lived there, and then when we moved to New Jersey, he still owned it and kept it going, and he still drove taxis uh, for a while, really? and then he became uh, a deli owner in New Jersey, 
and gave up uh, the taxi driving or the limo driving. Well, your dad's kind of an entrepreneur, too. He is. And so you came by it honestly, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, maybe it was in the genes. Yeah, I bet it is. So what made you want to come to New York from Jersey, come on over? Did you have big dreams always? Yeah. I, when I was in college, we would watch MTV and uh, TRL and just say, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, so it... You know, it was a little bit of a, a flashy kind of uh, entertainment type dream, and it's definitely evolved and developed. But I always wanted to be in New York, and I was always socializing in New York. And then when it came to freelancing and being in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. as a host, uh, I just gravitated now, what's towards a host? What York? kind of a host? What do you mean? It's what you're doing. <laughs> oh, like a TV host. Like a TV host, yes. Oh, okay. So, so I started out doing that. You did? Where did you start out doing it? I started out at my lo local cable station in New Jersey. Yeah? Yes, called EBTV, mm -hmm. East Brunswick Television. Mm -hmm. And from there you moved to what, acting? And then I just continued hosting. And then I was doing hosting in New York for NYC TV, for uh, red carpet events here in New York. Mm -hmm. Whenever a movie premiere would happen, uh, I would be on the red carpet interviewing the actors and the directors. I bet you loved that, didn't you? It was a lot of fun, for sure. It's, yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. You, you see that as a passerby. You know, you see all the, the tents up and you see all the lights and the commotion. And I used to be in there on the carpet uh -huh. interviewing people. How long do you do that? I did that for a few years. And then were you also acting? Because I know you really have a really good acting career. Thank you. I wasn't acting at that time. Once I started looking for an agent to represent me for hosting, I only was focused on hosting. Mm -hmm. Then they opened me up to the world of acting and print modeling. Yeah, and you do a lot of print work, don't you? I do. I do. I have had campaigns for Verizon and Target and Rockefeller Center. People will <laughs> go into Newark Airport and see mm -hmm. my face, open mm -hmm. up a magazine and see mm -hmm. my face. Uh, you know, TV would be commercials. So I just got a few texts this weekend from people that saw me in different ads. So how do you feel when you open up a magazine and there you are? It's exciting. <laughs> oh my gosh. You just love it. Yeah. I, so, sometimes I'm by myself, so I just have to like get excited by myself. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be in Barnes & Noble and just crack open a magazine and just see and there, there, I, there am. I am. Oh. Yeah, full page or something like that. It's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Now, you've been doing that, what, about 10 years now? I would say eight years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you branched out and you have Actors in Christ? Yes. Is that what it is? What's that? Actors, Inc. So Actors, Inc. Uh -huh. at a certain point, I had the urge to do something in the acting industry to connect more with people and reach people and give them something back. And I found myself in acting classes and on sets and meeting such great people, but then not having anything else after that. And I just wanted to have something that we could con continue to connect through. Mm -hmm. And uh, being in acting workshops, I could, I could, I felt like I could recreate the formula of an acting workshop. and almost host my own acting workshop but not charge anything so it would be a free gift for mm -hmm. anyone how many that, people got involved with that as far as attending mm -hmm. about 20 people come every time we hold a mm -hmm. workshop that's great yeah and i bet there's such a need for people to feel connected yes because in this city you have to feel connected somewhere yeah it's wonderful because we get together we'll say a prayer We'll open up the evening and then we do an acting workshop where we get to know someone who's a coach or something and they'll mm -hmm. give us advice and good tips and inspiration. And then we go through scripts and we actually act so we get to oh, practice great. our craft. Right. And then we get to really talk. Sometimes you don't get to do that when you're mm -hmm. on set or when you're in and class. And do you help each other? In other words, try this, try that? Oh yeah, it's all about feedback and trying mm -hmm. different things. It's a safe space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you mentioned prayer. Um, how did you get a close relationship with God? Have you always had that? I haven't always had that. It's evolved. So, so how did it come about? I was brought to church by my mom when we were young. 
I, I saw pictures of us in the children's choir when I was about seven and my sister was five. So mm -hmm. it was young and we grew up pretty much with church friends and singing in the choir and going to church on Sundays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays sometimes. So it was a part of our lifestyle and my dad eventually came with us too. So I grew up in church. Uh, I stopped going uh, on my own during college and a little after college and then I came back and I started coming back, you know, of my own decision of wanting to really come back on my own. Don't you think there's an age, like in your 20s, that you, if you've grown up to be in church, that somewhere in there you start getting your own faith? Up until then, it's kind of like my, fa my parents want me to go, my mom wants me to go, and then somewhere in there you start thinking, what do I believe? Right. Yeah, I think it's natural for you to grow up with whatever your parents wanted you to believe, right? Yeah, about everything, to, not just church. Right, for you to have that mm -hmm. instilled in you, mm -hmm. but at some point you still want to know it for yourself and have chosen it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is how a lot of people's path with whatever faith mm -hmm. they came, mm -hmm. you know, they, they grew up with or whatever choices uh, or sort of values they grew up with. Well, have you ever had a time that your faith got a lot deeper for a specific situation, it like moved you forward, changed your life dramatically. Do you have anything like that ever happen? I feel like I'm in a place where that's just the standard mode of operations. For you. Just trusting and being faithful mm -hmm. and being at peace, knowing that I am walking with God. Yeah. Well, uh, what was his destiny? Have you ever thought about that? What was his destiny for your life and are you in it? I feel like I'm doing the best that I can do and living out my purpose and mm -hmm. being fully expressed mm -hmm. and really opening, walking through every open door. And I think that that's the best that anybody can do. I think you're right. I think uh, people try to have uh, some kind of a special experience where it's almost like, da-da, this is your purpose. And really, you find out by trying different things, finding out what you really like, what you succeed at, and by praying about it. But it, don't you think it takes all of it and just being open to new things? I think there's a few things to consider. And okay, I what? think people are wired all very differently, right? right. Uh -huh. The things that one person desires can be very different, are very different than what another person desires. There are some people that couldn't imagine not ice skating, but I don't have an, there's not an ounce of me that wants to go about ice yeah. skating, you know, yeah. my Got whole it. life. Got it. And yeah. so it's very distinct, people's desires. And so you honor that desire. You know, there's a part of you that knows what you what you desire, mm -hmm. um, and it could be multiple things, but you have an idea, and so you honor that by going for it and at least trying it and leaning into mm -hmm. it, um, and recognizing that that's not an accident because obviously, you know, we're all wired so differently with very different, distinct, unique desires. So it's not well, an accident. And speaking of the wiring, in your case, I can think of five things that you do that I know you do. Mm -hmm and they're all so different. And yeah. so you're wired to do a lot of different things. Right. And that's the way I am. Mm -hmm. I get bored easily and I go after something till I conquer it. And once I've conquered it and I feel like I'm good at it, then I wanna try something else. Mm -hmm. And so I know you do acting. Mm -hmm. I know you do spinning, you're an instructor. And I yeah. want you to talk about that. Then you, um, what else? You have a prayer app, mm -hmm. then Comedy. Com oh, yeah, you're hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I wish we had time for you to do that. You're so funny. It surprised me that you're a comedian because I just see you as this kind of like type A, go get them girl, and then you're just so funny. How would you get into comedy? I love comedy. You and do. I've always watched comedy. Yeah? I used to be able to recite 
diff entire like monologues or yeah just people's jokes I, I would know them verbatim yeah and I would you know recite them to my friends and so I enjoy comedy and really appreciate comedy so and you're good at it yeah so as a consumer I loved it and then sitting in the audience there was a part of me that wanted to go that extra step and like be there on that stage yeah and yeah. so that's what I'm saying like not everyone desires that like a lot of people love watching comedy, but they don't want to be on stage, and uh -huh. they know that uh -huh. they're happy watching it. Right. But there was that I was different. So uh -huh. when you know that there's a difference there, when you know that that desire is there, go for it. Right. Honor yeah. that. And yeah. so I took a class, and I that set up the structure that I needed to learn some basics and to get out there and get on a stage and do some open mics, and then from there. I had friends that put me in their shows and and still doing it. Now you're still doing comedy, aren't and you? And I'm still doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I that was a very that was a time when I felt like God helped me out too um, because I do so many different things. I didn't have the time to dedicate to comedy that I didn't have the time to dedicate to comedy that somebody who was a serious comedian would dedicate. Because someone who's a serious comedian yeah, is right. out there. Yeah, right, and maybe that's the only thing they do. Maybe they just do that one thing. That is the thing. only thing they yeah, do. Just and one it really thing. takes that full-time mm -hmm. effort. And I didn't have that time. But God honored that in me by allowing me to kind of skip the line. And <laughs> he did. I love he it. He really did. People work a long time. And they were going, how did you get and to do this? Really, I don't get to do it. They work really hard before they can even get on stage for yeah. more than one minute, yeah. five minutes, and not not have to pay for that let alone get paid uh -huh, uh -huh. and I was getting paid for that wow. without having to put in all those hours all right well now I know you also uh, do triathlons I know I've gone to your runs you I know did I oh, you do Betty. that yelling for you <laughs> all of that uh, but what kind of challenges have you personally gone through as you've moved through all of these different ventures for you as a person, what have you gone through? What's, what's been challenging to you? Going through all of the different ventures mm -hmm. and pursuing all the different things uh -huh. that I want to pursue. Mm -hmm. The most challenging thing and the most life-changing thing, uh, one of, I won't say it's the most because that's always a big title to give mm -hmm. anything. Right. So one of the biggest things was dealing with all the junk that I had to deal with so that I could get clear and really pursue everything with 100% gusto. So what do you mean get rid of the junk? What was the junk? We walk around with a lot of junk. You mean like physical junk or I mental mean, junk? I mean emotional junk. Yeah, yeah. So whether it's unforgiveness or a childhood that you regret or anything that you're blaming, those things will weigh you down and be drama in your mind and will cloud you and and mentally and really physically prevent you from being able to get up and go and like go for everything and mm -hmm. be available for everything. Do you ever get discouraged? Not really, not anymore. Mm -hmm. But I used to because I would see it as something that meant something about me. but. The fact how is do you, that, How do you not take it where it's like about you now? Well, so back to one of the biggest things was really having someone be a life coach to me. And having a life coach helped me to take the weight out of these things that used to weigh me down. So can you imagine just being weighed down in life? Oh, yeah. You feel Everybody a burden is. on your shoulders. You mm -hmm. really can't be free to pursue everything you want to pursue. Uh, say everything you want to say, talk to everyone you want to talk to, just be your real self. Mm -hmm. It really suppresses you. And so when I got that lifted by just working with a life coach and, and being able to get rid of all those things, then um, it took the weight out of things that used to be personal. Because things are not personal. and But I, you take them personally. We take them personally. Because Especially in your head. You can have mind games going on in your head, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. so it's a practice, and the better the tools are that you have and the more you work on that, and having a coach really helps. How long have you had a life coach? For a year. And you can tell a huge difference. Oh, massive difference. I'm a very different person. I feel like before life coaching, I was 
su surviving, and now I'm really living. It's wow. a big difference. And a lot more personal inner happiness, right? Yes, Huge. of course. Huge. And nothing else changed around me. That's what I, that's why I know it's really about me because it's not like my family changed. It's mm -hmm. not like my, uh, my bank you account. changed. It's not like my bank account changed. My, my career situation didn't yeah. change, but I changed. And that's and all it takes. And do you find that you have more inner contentment? Yes. Yeah. Well, for the people that are watching, what kind of wisdom have would you give people? What would you say to someone who says, I'm an entrepreneur, or if they say, I want to be an actress, or I want to do triathlon, uh, what, give us some wisdom. The two biggest things are having a relationship with God and getting life coaching because no matter what I go through, whether it's relationships or business or body weight and exercise, I mean, we can feel so in turmoil. And those two things have really centered me and constantly given me peace and power. And you wanna go through life with a sense of peace and a feeling of power. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna feel powerless. You don't wanna feel like things are out of control. And you wanna feel at peace and you wanna feel loved because things are always gonna be in flux. Things are always gonna be changing. And so if you can find, uh, become, if you can get to a place of peace and love, no matter what, then you will be set for life. But your wisdom is you can't do that by yourself. You cannot. I think that you want to have a relationship with your creator so that you have an open line of communication and you can pray and you can seek and you can get real to your purpose and get real to truth and wisdom from God. And then you also want to get clear of the junk that you might be carrying around because even with God's love and even with a close relationship with Him, mm -hmm. you could still be stopped up and stuck. And that's where the life coach and would come in? And that's where the life coaching so comes So really in. what you're saying is a spiritual answer and a practical answer, Yes. right? Both, yes. that's your wisdom. Have yes. spiritual answers together. and practical answers together, mm -hmm. not one or the other. Yes. That's what's worked for me. I've always had God, but there was still a something more. missing. There was still more to grow, mm -hmm. and I'm living so much larger and freer, mm -hmm. and in more with more power, and 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 freedom now that I've gotten life coaching. So I always felt God's love, but I still wasn't able to operate as freely as I mm -hmm. am now that I've gotten like, the life coaching. Like a key, it is. How much do you pray? I pray every day. All the time, mm -hmm. like some people call them, uh, call them popcorn prayers. You know, it's just as it occurs you to, to sure. pray, you pray. Yes. You just talk to the Lord, right? Yes, I do have quiet time in the morning where I'll do a little bit of yoga and stretching, and right after that, it'll be a perfect time for prayer. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that as a scheduled. Do you quiet read the time. Bible every day? I am getting better at that. Mm -hmm. I am. Committing, recommitting as of today. I, I <laughs> as started, of this show? <laughs> no, no, I started today actually, this uh -huh, morning. Uh -huh. And I read the first chapter of John. But yeah, I, I'm recommitting to reading a chapter a day because I do want to become more intellectual about uh -huh. my faith and, and have those scriptures and that yeah, knowledge. Yeah, it's truth. That's the other thing. It's truth. And the more truth you can get inside yourself, the more you act in ways that you need to act. I mean, you just instinctively act the right way because you've been getting that word in you, word in you, word in you. Yeah. So I want to tell those of you that have been watching this show, think about what she said. Think about that. Would you call that wisdom? I would. For myself, I am so blessed. I have friends that are really wise, a lot of them actually. And they are people who walk with God. They do have a close walk with God and they do read the Bible and they do believe it and they do act on it. And as a result, everybody around them sees them as somebody wise and they come to them for advice. 
So they become, in effect, a life coach. It doesn't have to be that title. You don't have to go to a person who says, I'll be your life coach. It is possible to form friendships with very wise people. So with all my friends, we've always laughed and said, we don't have to pay for a counselor or a therapist because each of us are busy doing that to help people. Let's just help each other. And probably the piece of wisdom I would give you is have the kind of friends around you that you know love you. You know they love you. They want the best for you. So that when they say to you, hey, here's something I think you could change or here's something I think you could think about, then you'll listen and you won't be defensive. So there is true wisdom. This woman talking tonight is a woman out there going for everything with great gusto, willing to make mistakes as she moves forward learning. And you can do that too. Why not you? In fact, one of the things I always say to myself when I see something that could be done, I always say, why not me? Somebody's got to do it. Why not me? And I want to do it. So that's our wisdom in the night for you tonight. Go and enjoy life, but go with God because he wants to go with you.